And could you tell us a bit about yourselves and what you do? After you. After you. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> We're obviously very sort of We're fair. very polite. Yes, yes very polite with one another. Um, I'm Sherry Lungi, and I'm playing Gwendolyn in The Importance of Being Earnest. And I'm playing a young woman um, a little more than half my age, actually, which is great fun. And I must say, very rejuvenating. I'm feeling younger every day. <laughs> I am Christine Cavada and I'm playing Cecily Cardew and I am so thrilled because at the moment lots of actresses complain that there are no parts for actresses, particularly of a certain age. That's and I think so we are what's known as mature actresses. Yes. Indeed. If you look at Spotlight, we're known as character actresses now. Yes. We've got to that age, sadly. We're vintage. However, um, this is probably the first time I've actually played a Juve lead, which is that I am of a certain age, and I'm playing an 18-year-old, so that's my idea of a good time, to play an 18-year-old <laughs> just before I get my uh, freedom pass. So <laughs> Brilliant. That's, that's made my day, that's made my week, to yep. be able to play that. I um, think we're, we're, we're full of gratitude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> gratitude, and comedy, because it's fantastic to play. Yes, it, it is. Um, it really is, because you get waves of laughter coming across. Also, we get to have a sort of tennis match, with a verbal tennis match, we're sort of... Um, Beatrice and Benedict, but actually we're going to Lynn and Cecily. Yes, it's verbal yeah. fencing. And we have the great mm. tea scene. Sadly, we have the tea scene, but we don't get to eat any of the cake. You get to drink the tea, but that's about it. Yes, which is disgusting. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> and we wear nice frocks. Yes, we do. And we speak beautiful English. Yes. <laughs> the Queen's English. We do, we do, yes. So what's your favourite part of what you do? You mentioned quite a lot of things there. In this play? Well, in general. If, of being an actress or... Oh, God, just making believe. You know, I, mm. I was always making believe as a child. It's, it's, mm. a, it's a great alternative to the real world, you know, mm. it's a great escape. Yeah. I love this because, for my money, Cecily Cardew, the part I play, the whole play is sort of surreal. Plus, you get two for one in this show, everyone. I want you to know that. It's two for one because we're not just doing Oscar Wilde. We're doing the Bunbury Players, which is the reason why we're doing it. We're an amateur dramatic company doing Oscar Wilde. But I think it's like, for me, it's like Alice in Wonderland. It's slightly surreal. It's very surreal. And it's a laugh, isn't it? The contrast between the Bunburys and our character means you get, uh, you get uh, extra bang for your buck when you come and see the show. And it's some um, fun for professional actors to play amateurs. And actually, it's not that easy. So come and see the show and you'll find out more about yes, it. Yes, it's a play within a play. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, when was the first moment you fell in love with theatre? Oh, well, my mother brought me to a, I can't remember, I wish I could remember which theatre it was, but it was a beautiful old London theatre, very much, must have been Shaftesbury Avenue. I don't think it was this theatre. And uh, it was the first time I'd ever been, and it was to see a pantomime of Alice in Wonderland with Frankie Howard playing the caterpillar. How brilliant. Mm. And I remember walking down the central aisle with my mum, I must have been about four. I remember looking, I just remember being absolutely bewitched by the, the, the beauty of the mm. theatre, the little cherubs and the lan lanterns. And I remember looking up at the box, <coughs> excuse me, and saying, oh, mummy, I, wouldn't it be wonderful, because the little box with the curtains and everything. Mm. <coughs> and she said, well, just a minute. And we went out, went up the stairs, opened a little mahogany door, <coughs> stepped out into a box. Oh, how lovely. Hanging over the stage. And we're in a box now. <laughs> we are. <laughs> yeah, so I was partly on stage. Yeah, yeah. gift wrapped. Um, I don't know, but my father, he, he, ha he had a regular job eventually, but when he was in his youth, he was a stand-up comedian. Oh, really? Yeah, in Liverpool. So my first experience was going to see shows in working men's clubs in the north, which was something else. <coughs> um, and then uh, when I was a kid at school, I wrote school plays. I wrote a terrible play about William the Conqueror, and the play consisted of the curtains being shut and opened about 50 times. That was the entire play. <laughs> rubbish. And then I did school plays, but actually I think the thing that I loved most wasn't the theatre, it was more common wise. So I have to say, um, one of my true loves is comedy. And it's courtesy of the darling Nigel Havers that I get to do a lot of comedy. And uh, we have fun doing it. Don't we? Comedy is we make, us, we make each other laugh on stage, never mind the audience. <coughs> there's nothing we? like, there's yeah. nothing like tickling and yeah. there's nothing like getting a response. Yeah. You know, feeling yeah. funny. Yeah. It's lovely. Yeah. What <coughs> advice would you give your younger self? Gosh, I don't know. It's, that's a hard one. I mean, it's all hindsight, isn't it? Yeah. If I knew then what I know now and yeah. all of that. I just trust your instincts. I, you know, I, I think I now totally, my instincts are the thing I really, really pay the most attention to. I think when you're younger, you're easily influenced and yeah. full of self-doubt. I would just, just absolutely get in touch with your instincts because they're there to preserve you and, and you know, help yeah. you do the right thing. I think if I was talking to a younger actor, I would say it's about you, not the agent. 
they all get hooked on agents and promotion and all that. And actually, it's about your talent and just believing in yourself. You know, sure. confidence is the sure. answer. Yeah, you can't it. buy it. You have to sort of grow up with it. <laughs> and finally, if your life were a musical, what would the grand finale number be? <laughs> God, this is an embarrassing one. <clears throat> Somewhere over the rainbow. Beautiful. That's adorable. <laughs> I so don't know musicals that. Um, uh, maybe Oklahoma, because I lived there once. Uh, or I quite like that song, but I don't even know what musical it's from. This shows my ignorance <laughs> about musicals. I'm going to wash that man right out of my hair. What is that? Is that, is that South, South Pacific? Pacific? Yes. Oh, or, or Imelda Staunton as Miss Adelaide in Guys and Dogs. Thank you. Oh, that's a great yeah. musical. That'll do me. Yeah. <laughs> poils, the poils. Yeah. A girl can develop a gold. Take back your mink. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you.